This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Wednesday, November the 30th in the year 2011 here at the Niles Public Library. My name is Neil O'Shea and I'm a member of the reference staff and I'm privileged today to be speaking with Mr. Arthur Shapiro. Uh, Mr. Shapiro was born in Chicago on June 22nd, 1925 and now lives in Niles. Mr. Shapiro has kindly consented to be interviewed for this project and we will now begin the interview. Um, Mr. Shapiro, do you recall when you entered the service? I was inducted on in March of 1945. March of 1945. I don't know the exact date. Yeah. Had you graduated from high school? From Crane Tech. Crane Tech. Chicago. Chicago. Yes. And I took ROTC for four years at Crane and I enjoyed the Army the military life very much. At that time, did you think that there was a possibility of war or military service? Well, I'm not sure about that, but the war was on when I was in high school, and I graduated in 1943, and 18 years old, and just ripe for the draft. Yeah. Um, was anybody else in your family involved in the war? Or was no. No. I was the oldest boy. Yeah. And um, so at that time you were living in, in Chicago. Right. At Humble Park. Humble Park. And, um, and I was drafted in right out of high school. Uh, and I had a heart murmur. And I, at first I was 4F. Very disappointing. But as time went on and I kept thinking about the service, we walked down to a, a neighborhood draft board and we signed up. And lo and behold, we had a physical and I passed a second time. Have you ever had any problems with the heart murmur later in life? It's no, just something you've... I'm 86 and a half and I've never had another problem with my heart. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you graduated from high school. Yes. And then you got drafted, and, and then the, um, it was rejected. a heart murmur. Rejected. And then you waited for a few months? Well, maybe a little longer than that, yeah. in March of 45. Or maybe, no, I, maybe before that, but they finally called me in March of 45. Yeah. And I took my basic in Camp Maxey, Texas. Uh, the war ended while I was in basic training. Were you, were you happy enough to go in the Army? Oh, yeah, I was looking forward to it. You didn't have, like, a preference for the Navy or something else? No, or? I was happy with the Army, and I was happy to go away. I never get homesick, and, I, in fact, I enjoyed it very much. Was that the first time you were ever away from your family? No, for I always extended? went to camp for two weeks or a month sometimes. So you were used to going away from home and mixing with different people right. and whatnot. Yeah. You know, times weren't so wonderful at home in those days, so actually it was nice being away from home. Yeah, it was just the end of the Depression. Uh, my father worked sometimes, most of the time, I guess. So we managed, but I, I enjoyed the Army a lot. Yeah. So um, so you're, you're training down in, in Texas. At, is it Fort Maxey, you said? Yes, Fort yeah. Maxey. It's in Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. It was hot, hot, very hot, humid weather. But uh, the basic training went through without any problems? No problem. No problem. I, we didn't have non-coms like you see in the movies or officers like you see. They were they were nice GI Joes and everything went well. Yeah. So then you were you were in the infantry then, were you? Or, yes. Yeah. The 990th. Nine, well, I guess because I was in the printing business, <laughs> I don't know why, what other reason they would put me in the signal service, signal corps. But that's what I. Wound up in. When you say you were in the printing business, was that something you worked at through high school or when you graduated from high school or your family was Before involved? Before and when I grad, I took a, a Smith Hugh course in printing in, at Crane Tech. That's a college course in printing. And uh, yeah, as soon as I got out, I got a job. And then I transferred from the printing business to the lithography. And that's what I did for 50 years. Wow. So, um, you were kind enough to um, to draft out this preliminary statement of, of remembering. Yeah. And I think you mentioned that, um, uh, so when you completed your basic training in, 
in Texas, you were shipped then to Fort Ord, California. And we were there a short time, and and they had an indoctrination. They offered a reenlistment with a short furlough, and so I took it. And that's how my serial number got an RA. And uh, we went to Europe instead of Japan. So your your first because was it because the war had ended or was ending that you you were you were in just for the when they were going to let you go in California you re-upped? If they weren't going to let me go. I would have had to. I would have gone to the to China. Yeah, to China or or Japan. But I think it would have been a a shorter term of service. I think I don't know how long I would have had to be in. But they offered that deal, so I took it, um, and it was in almost two years. Yeah. And so then, from from California, then back to I came. I I took a furlough in California. I had family there, and I then I came home for the rest of it, and then I back to Fort Sheridan, and then Fort Sheridan went to I think Virginia, Camp Pickett. And from Camp Pickett to Camp Shanks. Camp Shanks is in uh, New York. In New York. And then we went overseas. And that was the first time I heard about the Holocaust. I, I don't know how it is, but returning GIs had pictures they had taken. And that's the first time I heard that there was such a thing going on over there. Really? I don't think anybody else. I never heard conversation about the Holocaust in, in, in 1945. That was the first time I heard about it. Yes. Yeah. But you were you were you didn't wind up in Germany, did you? Or no. Wound up at first. Well, we landed in La Havre, France, and then I was in Amherst, Germany, for just a week or so. I don't know. They were moving us around, and then we went to uh, Vienna, Austria, and I was there for a while. We had a there. We had a signal depot. We were, I think the troops over there were more a, a show, you know, I mean, <laughs> of the occupation. Actually, we didn't do an awful lot to move some materials around and supplies here and there. Hired people to, uh, if they could prove they weren't Nazis, we hired them to work in the depot. And and then they needed some people in, uh, in Wells. And that's where I spent the rest of the and Wells is a, is a town in Austria, Small town, not yeah. far from Vienna, or is it? Well, it wasn't that far, but it it was a ride, yeah. And that's where we spent the rest of our time doing what? I was in the, I was a company clerk, and that, that's what I did. I ran the office, and and for the rest of my Time and service. I was in Wells, Austria. Yeah, was there a lot of de was there a lot of destruction in Austria? Probably not as much as Germany, or uh, not in Wells. Uh, there was in, uh, in Vienna, but not not an awful lot. Well, I remember Schönbrunn Castle, which was a was all bombed. All the glass windows it was all were all knocked out. But where we were billeted was called the Ring. And there was a parliament building and the opera house. Oh, the Ringstrasse in Vienna or something. Right, yeah, Maria yeah. Hoppestrasse is the main street. Yeah. And uh, we were in one building and across the way the Russians, I don't know where the British and French were stationed, but... Uh, Did you all get along or was there ever any... The Russians were the toughest to get along with. Uh, language barrier for one thing. Uh, they had more restrictions than we did. But we had four power jeeps running, you know, there would be one of each French, American, British, and a Russian soldier in a jeep patrolling the area. A soldier from each country in the same jeep? Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, were you a driver? Or? No, I wasn't. Yeah. I was, those were all MPs. So yeah. You know. But I remember that. That's what it's all about, remembering. <laughs> yeah. Time and the food was good? And there, Pardon? The food was okay? You were, oh, we ate in a restaurant. We, in Vienna, we did that. You know something? I can't even remember where we ate in Wells. I can't even remember how we... In Vienna, we ate in a regular civilian restaurant. It was very nice. But in Wells, where did we eat? 
I cannot remember. That's a long time ago. So then, um, it must have been a relief to when the war ended. Or did when you feel, ends. or did you feel like you wanted to? For everybody, you know. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. But I think that uh, I don't know. In Wells, there were not uh, four power jeeps or, or all all the countries. In Wells, it was just Americans. Just Americans. Yeah. In Austria and Vienna, it was everybody. I think. Uh, I mean, what was the occupation? I think it was more a show of force. Yes. And anything else? I mean, there were there was always a lot of activity. Mark Clark was the uh, top guy. He's reckoned to be a pretty good general, I think. I think he had a good reputation. Yes. Yeah. I, I met him once. Uh, I, I had to go to his building. I forget what for, but he was coming out, and so I took out my camera, and he posed for me. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice man. Yeah. So, do you recall any particularly uh, funny times or humorous incidents? Sometimes the, the stories that stick in your mind. No, as a matter of fact, it was pretty humdrum. I have to say, uh, we didn't have a lot of troop movement. We had the same guys most of the time I was there, and uh, I remember the guy in charge was Captain Charles Barr. He was a very friendly officer. And, tried to encourage me to sign up and stay there longer, but I didn't do it. <laughs> Why did he want you to do that? He wanted you well, talented yes, to run an I office? I think he was happy with the way I was running the office more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. So he didn't, you hardly saw the officers. They were gone all the time. So we, we ran things pretty much by ourselves. Yeah. So the, the idea of having a career in the Army did not, it didn't appeal to you? Or? Well, I wouldn't say 100% no, but but I didn't do it anyway. Yeah. So did you did you get a lot of any recreational time or furlough time in Europe or? Yeah, I went to uh, Switzerland, and I went to Salzburg, Austria, which is a beautiful place. Uh, they have it's a marionette capital. They have a lot of theater, a lot of music. It's a very arty town. Beautiful there. And Vienna was very nice. Running around Vienna woods and whatever. We used to run around quite a bit. We had a whatever we wanted out of a motor pool, a jeep or a truck, and we would run around a lot. It's a beautiful city, Vienna. Yes. Yeah, it was very nice. The, um, so you were looking forward to the uh, your release from the service in November of 1946? I don't know if I ever really gave it a lot of thought. I was happy yeah. where I was at, and I, I think I would have enjoyed staying longer, but if you wanted to stay, you had to sign up for at least another year. Yeah. And conversation with my parents encouraged me not to, you know. Yeah. But I think I would have liked a little more. It was. Yeah. It was so nice. you stayed in touch with home through letters. Yeah. 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 The. Uh, but it sounds like your 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 service, your military service, was pretty much what you bargained for, what you expected. It. Well. I don't know. Uh, once the war ended, I suppose I didn't know what to expect. You know? Yeah. Uh, once the war was over, we had a wonderful the American uh, Fifth Army marching on, on May 5th is May Day, is a communist holiday. Yes. And all the four powers bands, uh, uh, armies would be in a parade. But the Americans were so outstanding, it was unbelievable with chrome helmets and chrome bayonets and the shiniest boots. They were really a wonderful marching. Even though people were not happy about Americans, when they came down the street, everybody stood at attention and saluted. They were, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, the Third Army Marching Band. So you're saying it was the, 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 Austri the, civil the Austrian population wasn't that happy with the Americans because they had so. lost or? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, we were, at least our outfit, we were pretty liberal with our Rations with cigarettes and whiskey or whatever we got. We were, you know. So you were well. The Americans were well liked then in Vienna. You think? You're I would well. think so. Yeah. I, yeah. I would. I don't know about the other groups, but I. I think we were popular. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you arrived in, in. You went over to Europe. Did you go over to Europe on a Liberty ship? On a Liberty. And did you come back on a Liberty? I came back on a Liberty, and I'm not a good sailor. And I was sick. 
five or six days each way. Oh dear. And the water was was really rough both times. Did you come out of Laharv on the way back too? Did you say? No, Bremerhaven. Bremerhaven, yeah. Yeah, I came out of Bremerhaven. So, did you did you was it maybe a train or a truck from Vienna to to Bremerhaven, or you saw some of time, more time in Germany? Or? I. You know what? It must have been a train. I know. Yeah. I must have. We must have taken a train to Bremerhaven. I don't. Yeah. Know. A lot of things I never thought about, so now I don't remember. Yeah. Well. So, um, you were discharged from Fort Sheridan then, or Fort Sheridan again? Yeah. Right back in the Midwest. Yeah. So you probably took a train from New York to uh, to Chicago then. Yes, we landed in New York again. I'll never forget how nice the Statue of Liberty looked over going past it. Yeah. Yeah, we landed in New York, and uh, I don't know how many days we were there, but then we're, I think we took the train to El Capitan back from New York to Chicago, and that's it. Yeah, did you, um, did you have any trouble readjusting to civilian life? No, not at all. I was back to work in a, maybe a, in a week, same job. My boss took me back, and oh, you must have been good, yeah. And that was at the print shop or the printing shop, right? That yeah. was in Chicago. Yeah, in downtown. Yeah, Gunshot Warren Printing, and I worked there for forty-five years. Yeah. yeah, including my army time was. So did you, um, because you had a job already set up, you didn't consider using the GI Bill or anything like that, or one of my biggest regrets. <laughs> Yes, I wish I had. Yeah. And then, um, did you make any friends in the service or from the Chicago area that you kept up with or that... No, uh, not, not a lot. Yeah. Uh, I had one friend from here. He was in Munich, Germany, and I was in Vienna. We visited a couple times up and back. He came to Vienna, and I went to Munich. But no, I didn't... I don't have a, a lot of service friends. Yeah. So then... Um, did you join a veterans organization or no, anything I don't. like that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember a group I was in for, but I forgot the name a long time ago. Yeah. A group from Skokie. Yeah. I remember the name. May I ask when you moved to Niles? When did you move to Niles? I lived in Niles 31 years. 31 years. Yeah, 1980. And before that, you were you were in Chicago. I lived in Rogers Park, West Rogers Park. West Rogers Park. Yes, I live out here for 31 years. Yeah, in the same apartment. Yeah. The um, now, how do you? We always ask these questions um, in the last part of the interview. How do you think your military service and, and experiences might have affected your life? Well, <laughs> how did it affect my life? Well, I tell you what, basic training. They talk about cleanliness, you know, and all. Yeah. I have never lost any of those habits. I can still make a bed like I did, and I can work in a kitchen, and I can clean a bathroom. My my basic training habits have stayed with me forever. Terrific. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, do you think your experience in the military influenced your thinking about war? Or about the military in general? I never gave it much thought. I think it's, I mean, what I read every day about war, war is, poor guy's got a tough road to hoe in Afghanistan, Iraq. I mean, this guy, Vietnam was a terrible war. Uh, I think that World War II, veterans were treated better than uh, veterans from Korea and Vietnam. Yeah. I, don't know about, and I don't know about now. Yeah. Listen, it's a terrible thing, war. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. You, um, you, when you, you reached the rank of corporal in the, when you were in the service, yes. I think. So you were promoted. Do you recall when you were promoted or why you were promoted or? I don't know. If was it was that it? For whatever I was doing and, uh, Was that in Vienna probably? You yes. got promoted? Right. Yeah. I remember it. Lieutenant Forbath was his name, and yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe. I suppose if you had stayed on, they might have made you a sergeant. Oh, You'd have moved up. About it. Yeah. That was the. That was they were dangling. Uh, 
but I, I, I used to make a mail run. Well, the things I did uh, while I was there got me a promotion, I suppose. Yeah. I, I used to make a mail run from Wells to Linz, Austria, up and back, weekly. You know, whatever I did in the office, I mean, people coming and going, court marshals, things like that, I handled all of that kind of stuff. Were there a lot of court marshals? No. Yeah. no. Occasionally. Did um, General Patton, he was killed in an accident, wasn't he? I don't remember that. Yeah. In an accident? Yeah, it was supposedly he died in a motor accident or something. Somewhere like Austria, Czechoslovakia about that time. I was just wondering if you remembered anything that, no. that what it was to talk about. Yeah. yeah. But the, uh, anyway, I was, I was wondering, Mr. Shapiro, would you mind reading this now? This, this, well, this might, be a good, might be a good wrap-up for the interview. Would that be okay? Yeah, I can read this. My name is Arthur Shapiro, born June 22, 1925, Chicago, Illinois. My nicknames were, all my life, Art or Artie, and mostly Art. There's no question I was a child of the Depression. I started school at the Columbus Elementary School on Augusta Boulevard in Humboldt Park area. But as we moved quite often, I went to many other schools, finally graduating from Von Humboldt Elementary School on Rockwell and Hearst in 1939. Next, I was on to Crane Tech High School. At Crane, I had my first taste of military training with four years of ROTC, which I took a great liking to. 1941, the war broke out, and staying in school was tough. However, in our house, dropping out of school for any reason, was, including the Army, was out of the question, so I had to plug away until 1943. I graduated. I was 18 years old, just right age for the draft. I got my draft notice sometime after my birthday. I was notified to appear for a physical prior to being inducted into the service. After the examination, I was told I had a heart murmur and was being rejected for service. One of the biggest setbacks I can ever recall in my young life. So after some months passed, I decided to try again to get into the Army. And after another physical, this doctor did not think my heart murmur was so serious, and I passed the examination. Waiting impatiently, time passed, and finally, in March of 1945, I left for basic training. I went to Camp Maxi in Paris, Texas. While still in basic, the war ended. When basic training was finished, we were sent home for a furlough before being sent overseas. After my furlough, I was sent to Fort Ord, California for deployment to the Pacific. However, while I, there, I re-enlisted for a year and was sent on another short furlough. When I reported back for duty, I was sent to Camp Shanks, New York, and soon was on a Liberty ship bound for Europe. Not much of a seaman, I was sick most of the way due to very rough waters, but managed to survive and landed at La Havre, France. And there we rode rickety passenger trains to Germany and finally came to our final destination, Vienna, Austria. <coughs> At this time, I was attached to the 67th Infantry Division, and later I was transferred to the 990th Signal Service Battalion in Wells, Austria. And the rest of my Euro service in Europe, I shuttled between Wells and Linz, Austria, as Corporal Arthur Shapiro, RA 46017674, a part of General Mark Clark's Army of Occupation. As a young 18-year-old, I looked forward with much anxiety to going to war and getting into the fighting and possibly being a great American hero. However, that never happened, but I'm grateful that I was able to be some small part of that big war, and not for one minute do I regret the better part of two years I spent away from home and family, and as a matter of fact, I regard it as a great American experience, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Years afterwards, did you ever want to return to any of those places in Europe that you had seen, or you made a list of things you'd like to? I went to France. Uh huh. Yes, we went back to France about five years ago, I think. It's a beautiful country, France. Yes, it is. Yeah. I hear people say French don't like Americans, but I didn't find any of that. I thought it was delightful. Yeah. And I went to Israel. 
and I went to Italy. I went to Milan. And uh, uh, you enjoyed Italy also? Sure. I enjoy every when you're on vacation. If you feel good, you got money in your pocket. Everything's good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as long as you're not sick and broke, you can always have a good time. My uh, nephew, his wife was a uh, a home. What do you call her? She dresses people, a home buyer, you know. I mean, people came to her and say, I want a dress or whatever. And so she did a lot of buying in Italy. That's why from France we rented a car and we drove to Milan. Yeah. And we spent about a week there. It was beautiful. Yeah, very nice country. But you never went back to Vienna or? My wife, not that eh, she has videos. She wouldn't go to Germany or so. I, no, I never had an English to go there anyhow. Now I wouldn't mind going, but. She didn't want to go there. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Yeah. I, actually, I don't travel a lot. I go to California for four months, and three and a half months or so, and I'm I'm happy. I have a good winter, and yeah, I got the best of both worlds. So. Yeah. There was a nice. Um, there was a veteran, I think, who may have may have lived near here. Uh, you mentioned this other the other veteran, uh, Mr. Aronson, but there was a Mr. Hyman Ray. Did you know? Hi Ray. Hi Ray. Yeah. Absolutely. He he participated in the project, and he, yes, he passed I know. away. Yes, Hi Ray. Spitzer, Aronson, I think that's all I saw. Yeah, yeah. yeah I raised, he was uh, he lives in my building. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he was a a lawyer, but he didn't practice law. Yeah, he was a very good friends of mine. Yeah, very. He's a gentleman. Yeah, he's a nice man. Very interesting story. Right. He had a glove um, company. Yeah, and they were in, they had he had a deferment because the the, the company made. Uh, products for the army. Oh, I see. But he said to his dad, I'm going in. Yeah. And the dad said, are you sure? And he said, yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, you're a nice guy too, Mr. Shapiro, especially for coming in and giving us this, this interview. All right. And I will get to work and try and uh, type this up for you. And then if there's anything you want to add to it or a, a funny story or sometimes, you know, no, uh, really we can't can, think of anything. We, we, can, we can work on it. Yeah. And then you can it, always have gray hair. <laughs> yeah, what a good look. Yeah. So we'll use that picture on the front cover, and hopefully the other picture that we took today will turn out, and we'll wrap up this uh, this uh, this interview, which helps us to understand the war effort. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Shapiro.